So those are the three types of grids. What they're doing is they're trapping some of the extra radiation so that your picture doesn't turn out to be too dark. All right, if your picture is too dark, then you really can't see the, the bones too well on the x-ray. And then the doctor would want you to take the x-ray again. So it tells you on page 45 a little bit about the grids. There is a number. When we talk about grids called the grid ratio. This tells us about how well the grid works or how efficient it is. All right, for example, you may have a grid that is a, an 8 to 1 ratio. Another one might be a 10 to 1. Another one might be a 12 to 1. Just think of those as three different uh, types of grids, three different ratios. So 8 to 1, 10 to 1, or 12 to 1. The thing to remember about this is the higher the number, the better it is. Okay? Just think of like the filters that you buy in your air conditioner at home. You can buy those blue filters at Walmart that you have to change once a month. Okay? Or you can spend more money and buy one that will last for three months. Okay? So the higher the number, the better it is at filtering out the scatter radiation. So that's going to prevent your x-ray from being too dark. Alright, in the notes on page 4 and in the book on page 52, it talks about pediatric patients and female patients. Just a couple of things that you have to be aware of. Remember with uh, little children, there's some areas you need to protect. First of all, the nervous system in, on a child under the age of two is still going to be very sensitive to radiation. So you have to be careful about taking x-rays of certain parts of the body like the brain, the spinal cord, uh, sinus x-rays. Okay. Also their bone marrow is, is still sensitive to radiation. For females, you want to follow what's called the 10-day rule. All right. You always want to make sure that a female is not pregnant before you take an x-ray. Okay. When is the most vulnerable time for taking x-rays of a female pregnant, or I should say of a patient that's pregnant? Mm -hmm. The first trimester, the first three months. That's when it would cause the worst effects if you did have to take <coughs> a lot of x-rays. So they have this thing called the 10-day rule. It basically means if a female starts her period today, it's safe to do an x-ray for the first 10 days after it starts because most likely she's not going to be pregnant at that time. Okay, so let's say, for example, today is February the 2nd and the period started today. For the next 10 days, you can take an x-ray. But after that, you should try to avoid x-rays for that, for the rest of the time until the next menstrual cycle because these first 10 days are unlikely that she's going to be pregnant. But you should ask all females when you do an x-ray, when was your last menstrual period? Is there any chance you might be pregnant? Even some offices will have females do a urine pregnancy test before they take an x-ray. Okay, so if you're having some problems, and you're pregnant, if it's not a life-threatening situation, they're going to try to avoid taking any x-rays just because of how sensitive, sensitive the body is to radiation, especially the fetus. All right, so now we're going to look at a math problem that talks a little bit about your exposure to radiation. And there's a formula that you use for that, and it's on page five in the notes. It's called the cumulative maximum permissible dose. All right, there's only a certain amount of radiation that you should get exposed to each year as a, a medical assistant or an x-ray tech. 
You're going to wear your badge that's going to monitor how much you're exposed to. Okay? The most that you should be exposed to is five rims per year. Okay, that's your limit. Five rims per year. But the older you are, actually your body is more resistant to radiation to a certain extent. So there's a thing called a cumulative maximum permissible dose. It's basically saying, based on your age, what is the, the maximum amount of radiation that you could have been exposed to for all the years since you were 18? Okay, in other words, you have to be 18 before you can legally get a license and take x-rays. So, from the time that you're 18 till however old you are now, let's say if you were 32, 34, we want to add up how much radiation could you have been exposed to during that time. For example, I'm 35. So if I was taking x-rays every year on patients from the age of 18 to 35, we could add up the most that I could have been exposed to during that time. Okay, and it's you use this formula, 5 times n minus 18. All right, 5 represents the maximum per year. 5 rims a year is the most. Okay, I don't want to get exposed to any more than 5 rims a year. n is going to be my current age. So what we would do is we would take my age of 35 and put it in place of n. 35 minus 18. 18 always stays the same and 5 always stays the same. So for each problem, you're only going to change this number here. The problem will tell you how old the person is. They're 42, they're 50, they're 75, okay? So based on their age, you're going to figure up their CMPD five what times. They, what if they started like, uh, they're like 20? Nine. Okay, so if they started at 20, then that's only going to be two years, right? Mm -hmm. So it would be 20 minus 18 is 2 times 5 would come out to 10 rims. So in those two years, they could have been exposed to 10 rims. So here we have 35 minus 18. What is that? How many years is that? That's about 17 years, right? Okay. So 17 times 5. Anybody do that in the calculator? Eighty-five. Eighty-five. Eighty-five rims. In other words, since I was 18, and I, we added up every year, the most I could have been exposed to is 85 rims at this point. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, it's an easy formula. This formula always stays the same. The only number you're going to change is N. Okay? And the problem's going to tell you how old the person is. They'll tell you they're they're 22, they're 44, 55, and you just use that to calculate their CMPD. The answer is always RIMS. Always use RIMS as the unit in your answer. Okay. 